Good morning and welcome to our worship service for today, May 28th. Happy Mother's Day. We've got a great service planned uh, today to honor moms, to honor campus students, but mostly to honor our Lord. Now, just in a little while, Tracy Kirsch is going to be sharing a communion thought with us this morning and just different things that uh, his mother taught him about the Lord. And uh, we're going to have some special honoring for our campus graduates. They are uh, some awesome young men and women in the Lord. We're going to be losing most of them as they're going to be moving out of Champaign, but we consider it a blessing to have had them here for a while, uh, that they could bless us, and hopefully we as a church could bless them. Now, right now, before we move on into our service, we're going to have a special uh, prayer meditation time, a special prayer song for Ukraine and the conflict, the war that's going on there. Of course, we have many brothers and sisters there. Uh, some of them we know personally. They're personal friends and they're in harm's way. Of course, there are thousands upon, well, even millions of innocents who are in harm's way there. And we want to pray for all of these. And, uh, you know, the threat for this could even go farther than it already has. Now, this recording right now is happening on Tuesday, May the 3rd, and it's quite possible that something even more terrible has happened uh, between now and when this service is aired on May 8th. And so this prayer is very appropriate. It's a uh, song prayer entitled, The Lord Bless You and Keep You. It's based on Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. And in this passage, Right before it, we find out it's the, actually the Lord's speaking here. It's the Lord's words. And he's saying uh, to Moses, it says in verse 23, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. And God says, say this to them. And then that's where the song starts. The Lord bless you and keep you. So let's... Let's let this be our prayer as we reflect on the Lord, as we reflect on our own spiritual family in Ukraine and all of those in Ukraine whose lives have been destroyed by this terrible act. And let's pray, the Lord bless you and keep you. Let's dedicate this to our brothers and sisters who are struggling and need our prayers. Oh, 
Our names are Matt and Amy Kinzer, and this is our son, Shepherd. We lead the campus ministry here in the Champaign Church of Christ. So our plan for today was to spend some time honoring our college graduates, but because we're not in person, we decided to delay it a week so we could celebrate all together. So we have a little bit something different planned for you today. So instead of a honoring ceremony, we actually showed a video to our students at our end of the year party last week. And we wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys because I think it just celebrates and shows all the awesome things they've done this year and all the great accomplishments that they have. So um, let's take a moment to honor our campus students and celebrate our graduates. Yeah, so sit back and enjoy.
Good morning. Uh, it's great to be here today. Um, I hope that the service has encouraged you so far. Uh, so hopefully that uh, what we've seen with our graduates, what we've seen with um, um, the prayer for Ukraine. Of course, our graduates are excited to start this next phase of their life. I think excited and, and probably terrified. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, I think during the welcome, we're going to lose most of them uh, to other cities, which is, which is sad. But we've loved having them here. We've been blessed uh, by their time here in Champaign, and we wish them God's speed and, and God's blessings. Now, of course, the big thing about today is today is Mother's Day, right? And, well, some people think Mother's Day is a sentimental foolishness, you know? We, but we got to admit that there is some sentiment to this day, and, and what's wrong with that, right? A little bit of sentimentality is healthy. I mean, that's what the whole Hallmark Channel is built on, sentimentality. Uh, but for some, you know, I understand and I can respect the fact that the day brings difficult memories, difficult feelings, uh, regrets and loss and things such as that. But in this morning's uh, Bible lesson, I want to take a little bit of a different take on Mother's Day, a little bit of a different point of view. I, I don't want to take away from the need uh, to be, you know, good children and honor our mothers, but I also believe that it's important to realize that we also have many different types of mothers as we go. Some of them are, are mothers, but they're not related to us by blood. Some of them may not even uh, have children of their own, yet they are our mothers. Because if we're part of the family of God, and they are part of the family of God, uh, then they are our mothers, or at least they can be. I want to look at this passage in the Gospels. This is in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. Uh, Jesus uh, is, is, is hanging out, and he's talking with the crowd, and then his mom and brothers come up and talk to him. This is what it says in verse 46. When Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. So he replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. We sometimes, I understand, take this passage with a grain of salt. Uh, we, we, we understand and say, you know, well, we're a family. And I know that um, in our culture today, so many different people, so many different people call things, you know, well, we're a family or we're like a family. And basically, they're not like a family. They're a group of people that get together for something. And if we're honest, we don't really treat each other like physical family a lot of times because we don't really think of each other that way, at least not to that depth. I mean, I love you. You're my brothers and sisters, but honestly, you don't hold the same place in my heart as my actual brothers or my mother or my father did. But I suspect Jesus was very serious when he said, pointing to his disciples, when he said, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. See, I suspect Jesus took relations in the kingdom far more seriously than we do. Something to think about, huh? Paul discipled Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, when he told him to not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. So we may not hold our spiritual family as closely or uh, emotionally as close as we do our physical family, but I understand like what from Paul's saying here, we need to treat them and be considerate of them uh, in that same way. Now, the truth is, now some do hold spiritual families closer than emotional or physical families. But that's usually because the physical family didn't have that great, uh, uh, maybe a healthy emotional bond in the first place. And so when the spiritual family came on, it really filled that need in their life. But if you were raised in a very close, emotionally supporting and loving physical family, uh, that place, you know, nothing can really take 
the place of that. I once heard someone give the challenge that all of us ought to have a Barnabas in our life and all of us ought to have a Timothy in our lives at all times. A, a Barnabas meaning someone to mentor us and a Timothy meaning someone that we can mentor. Now those are close relationships, but this is Mother's Day, right? So what about that type of relationship? Not a mentor type, not a discipling type, but a mother type of a relationship. In Romans 16, Paul goes through a list of a whole lot of people. He talks to a whole lot of people, lifting them up, honoring them, and six of these people are women, and he doesn't even name all of them. But in Romans chapter 16, verse 13, it's one of the Bible scholars sometimes struggle with. It reads, greet Rufus, which I think is a great name, but greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Now, it could be one of those minor throwaway verses, right? Oh, okay, say hey, to, say hey to Rufus for me and his mom. But if you look closer and really think about it, it could really open up something for us. Now, the statement could be taken two ways. It could mean that Paul had two women in mind, right? The mother of Rufus and his own personal mother. Or it could be saying, and this is what I think it's actually saying, is uh, say hi to Rufus, greet Rufus and his mother, who's like a mother to me. See, I believe that's what he actually meant, and it makes more sense grammatically that way. But it raises some, interest, you know, some interesting questions like, well, when and where did Paul meet Rufus's mom? Uh, did she you know, help him, nurse him through some serious illness or, or some serious injury? I mean, he had quite a few of them. Did Paul stay in her home during his missionary journeys uh, you know, sometime, maybe when he was in Rome? How, how did this woman and Paul form such a, a close bond? And why does he refer to her fondly like being like his own mother? You know, the Apostle Paul said that the mother of his friend Rufus had been like a mother to him as well. And no doubt uh, you know, she had concern for Paul. She took care of him like his own mother would have had. She may have cooked for him or met other physical needs for him like any mother would do. I mean, like they say, once a mother, always a mother. See, when a mother ceases to have children at home, they call them empty nesters, she's still going to be a mother. And she's still going to do motherly things. Even if it's a, a matter of mothering other people, other children. Now, we know that mothers do a whole lot more than cook, clean, and keep track of where the clean clothes are, right? They do a lot more than just physically take care of people. We know that mothers are in a unique position in our society. They have a profound impact on our lives. In athletes, and when they show them on the football field or uh, baseball or basketball or whatever sports, and the camera hits them, Nine times out of ten, they say, hi, mom. They don't say, hi, dad, which is, you know, kind of rough on us who are dads. But it's, it's always mom. And studies just continue to confirm that the average high school student and the average college student would say that the number one most influential person in their lives is mom or someone in that role. Now, sisters... Moms, you can and need to be a mother today to those in our own fellowship. Whether you have children of your own or whether not, or whether your children are still in your home or whether they've moved out. If the great apostle Paul needed a spiritual mother, then so do everyone else of us in this church. And I'm not just talking about the men who needs moms. Women, sisters need moms in their life. Everybody else, we need moms in our lives. And we need to let people be that to us, to be mothers to us. Why do we need it? Well, what do moms do? We look in Proverbs 31, and it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman and how she does so many different things, and we can find some different things that moms do in our life. And the number one thing we see right here is her mouth speaks wisdom. In Proverbs 31, verse 26 says, She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. 
The great president Abraham Lincoln once wrote that all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. You know, I've been a preacher for 41 years, and sometimes I'm asked, well, who's your favorite preacher? You want to know who my favorite preacher is? My mom. She preached to me for her whole life, when I was young, when I was a teenager, when I was married, and on up, and when I became a father. And she didn't preach at me, but her whole life was one incredible lesson. There's a great spiritual life wisdom in this church. Wisdom that can only come from years of fighting spiritual battles, testing the spirits, and being tested yourselves by having great victories and success, but also by having great sorrow and failures. A lot of times the greatest lessons are learned that way. Sisters, moms, don't waste this. Don't let the hard-earned wisdom be lost by keeping it to yourself. We need you to speak with wisdom and faithful instruction. Our teens need it. Our campus students need it. Our young married couples need it. Our young parents need it. And even like Paul, who is an older gentleman, us old guys need moms in our lives. I was so encouraged uh, last week, Matt and Amy were asking us about doing something different here as far as um, uh, uh, discipling. As, that is, in their college, in their campus ministry, rather, not having campus students, college students disciple college students, but rather having older disciples get with and mentor the college students on a regular basis. And that's so much more biblical, and it so much, makes so much more sense. Moms, you would be vital in this. And dads, you would be too, but this is Mother's Day and we're talking about moms. Will you embrace your role in this life? Will you continue to be a mom no matter where you are in your life? So many in our church need your wisdom and faithful instruction. Wisdom and faithful instruction that only you can give. The women, uh, moms give wisdom and faithful instruction. Something else is, she's always there when you need her. And that's just something amazing about moms. They're there when you need them. Proverbs 31.15 says, She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family. And in verse 30, chapter 31, verse 20, it says, She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. And in verse 21, it says, When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Now, I don't know what scarlet has to do with keeping you warm, but she's not worried about it. She takes care of her household. It's, it's been said that there's no way to be a perfect mother, but there are a million ways to be a good mother. And one of those ways, one of those primary ways, is be there. It's also said that 90% of being successful is showing up. I think it's one of the reasons why we need our moms to be there. We need to have that someone in our life. Is most women are good at listening. They're just good at just listening for the sake and the benefit of listening. Men, we're not like that. We're fixers, right? Now, we want to listen, but when we listen, we're often listening so we can figure out how to fix the problem, which is good if the problem needs fixing, right? Or if the someone who's talking, the person who's sharing with us, wants the problem to be fixed. But that's not always the case. And it's frustrating when they don't want us to fix the problem, you know? And that's Quite honestly, frustrating for them, and it's frustrating for us because we're going, "You, what do you mean you don't want me to fix it? Why are you telling me about this if you don't want me to fix it? I, I'm telling you, moms, we just need to be there to get with someone, to go out for coffee or tea and tasty cakes, right? And, and, and just talk. And it doesn't have to be with just the sisters. I mean, Rufus's mom was a mom to Paul. Many of our young men need that mom in their life. Our older men need, still need a mom in their life 
Our campus students are saying, hey, invite me over for dinner. Let's talk. Just be together. They still need that relationship to just be there. Moms speak wisdom. She's there when you need her. And she spreads joy and happiness. Verse 11 and 12 of Proverbs 31 says, Her husband has full confidence her in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And in verse 25, it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. You know, when there's a lot of laughter in the home, you just know something good's happening in that home. And of course, there needs to be more laughter in the home. If you know me, you know I'm a big proponent of laughter, right? It, it's my coping mechanism. It's what, how I deal with things. Some cope by distraction. Uh, some people cope by complaining. Some people cope by just getting busy with anything, just doing something. I cope by seeing the humor in things, even the hard things and bad things. And I know that frustrates some people, and they feel like I'm not taking things seriously. That's not true. That's just my coping mechanism. That's what I'm doing. It's how I deal with things and process things. That has nothing to do with being a mom. That was just a side note. Okay, but laughter. Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. Now, the Good News Translation puts it like this. It says, Being cheerful keeps you healthy. It's a slow death to be gloomy all the time. You know, when there's a lot of laughter in the home, somebody's putting out some good medicine. And it also shows a lot of love. The great Winston Churchill once said about his mother, he said, My mother always seemed to be like a, a fairy princess, a radiant being possessed of limitless riches and power. She shone for me like an evening star, and I loved her deeply. I want every sister here to realize how important she is to God's family. You have a chance to fulfill a role that nobody else can fill. Moms are very special people. And they have abilities that, quite honestly, dads don't possess. Without the love and the care a mother can give, I question the condition of the home. Well, you know what? Without the love and care all mothers can give, I question the condition of the church. Just like every home needs a solid foundation, the church home needs a solid foundation. And moms, you are an integral part of that foundation. Back in 1914, with President uh, Woodrow Wilson set aside the second Sunday of May as Mother's Day, he said this, No nation is ever greater than its mother, mothers, for they are the makers of of the next generation. Well, you know what? That's the same true for the church. And it's not just the physical moms that we're talking about because, as we said before, mothers of all shapes and sizes and forms, like Paul, who had his surrogate mother, we all need someone like that in our lives. So let's be that for one another, right? Let's be a mother to someone today. Let someone be a mother to you today and let her children arise and call her blessed. Happy Mother's Day. Well, that wraps up our service for today. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, I hope that if you're watching this, maybe you can made it, make a decision to be a mother to someone. Uh, to help someone and strengthen them with the things God has shown you in this life. I pray you have a blessed week, and I pray uh, that the Lord will be with you and watch over you. Let's be praying for one another, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Good morning, church. It is a blessing to be here this morning on 8 5 22 and you know what day that why it's a, such a special day it's a special day because it's mother's day 
And we were, uh, today's lesson is going to, uh, community is going to be around what makes a mother so special. And one of the things in, in, in the Bible, one of the verses in the Bible that talks about Mary, the ultimate mother, is in one, uh, Luke 1, 28, in the Living Translation Bible. And it says, you are honored very much. You are a favored woman. The Lord is with you. Man, that is, uh, 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 when I know when she heard that, the feeling that she got from just hearing that from that angel of the Lord was overwhelming. Probably was scary, but overwhelming. But then to really sit back and think about how she is honored, how she is favored. But most of all, the Lord is with her. And with that, what I want, one of the two questions that I want to talk about and stuff and things, and, and one of them is, one of the questions is, what is it that is special about your mom? And what have you learned from your mom? So I, I went and I looked up some of the things that people were saying about their mom, and some of the things that they were saying was, what I've learned from my mom, you only know love in its truest form when you have a child of your own. Another one is, what I've learned from my mom, love, forgiving, hard work, caring, encouraging, comfort, discipline. What I've learned from my mother, my mother was always giving love, caring, warmth, gave comfort, and everything to a child desire and great value, great sacrifice, never awaiting anything in return. Just true, pure love. I have, what I've learned from my mom, I learned so much about life because of my mother. She is one who led me to the Lord. Aside from being the vessel that God used her to let me born in this world, she taught me the value of life and the real meaning of sacrifice, love by demonstrating it with her daily life. One more, and I, there's so many you can talk about. God be with me to the end of time. What I've learned from my mom, this is something this is. God be with me to the end of time. Change, but he's still the same. Today, tomorrow, as he was yesterday. He is God that cannot and will not. And he will not lie. You can go on and on. There's so many things that you can talk about that people express or what their mother means to them. And one of the things that I, I had the opportunity, again, to talk to my mom on, uh, on Monday, this past Monday. One of the things me and my mom used to do, we used to sit and, and, and uh, I used to go see my mom every day. That was something I did every day. It wasn't a day that I didn't miss it. And I would stop by there and, and we would sit and talk. And one of the things that it always did, it would always end up talking about God. And I, on this Monday, I had the opportunity, uh, me and my mom was talking. I don't go get to see her as much as I would love to because she's up in age. She's 83 years old right now. And she's up in age where she has a lot of illness. So I, you know, with me still, with COVID, me still being around a lot of people, I don't want to go around my mom just in case, you know, uh, to, and things to make sure she's, she's safe and everything because she's got a lot of illnesses that are going on. But one of the things we talked about, and, she was, she, and, and we started talking about the Lord again, and she started crying. And I'm like, Mom, what's, why are you crying? And she was like, Man, I just, I, I, I just love God. I just, I know there's things that I need to change. I know there's things, ways that I need not to talk. I just want him to love me. I just want to please him. I just still, even at 83, she still cries when she knows how much God loves her and how much she wants to please him. And me, you know, when I get up here and do communion, one of the main things I do, I'm a crybaby. I'm a mama's boy. So, you know, I was like, Mom, you got to stop because you're going to have both of us crying. And once I start with my mom, it's over with because she means so much to me. 
So the thing on this Mother's Day, just think about all some of these little things that I've said. And I know you probably got even great, you have great stories to tell about your relationship with your mom and the things that she taught you, the things that she showed you, but most of all, the things that she taught you from God. The same way that those values was passed down to us is the same way Jesus passed them down to her. So this, as we honor our mothers today, let's thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not only for what he did on that cross, but for giving us the mothers that have helped mold us today. And with that, let's bow our heads as we get ready to take the juice, which represents the blood that Jesus uh, uh, shed it on the cross and the body that, that was beating uh, as he was going to, beaten as he was going to the cross. So with that, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Holy Father, we just thank you for all you continue to do. We thank you for just giving us life and giving us an opportunity where we can have hope. And that hope is to be with you someday because of what Jesus did on the cross. We thank you for the mothers that you've given us that showed us true unconditional love the same way Jesus did on that cross. There was nothing and nowhere that uh, he wouldn't go in order to show how much he loved us. And that is the same with our mothers also. There's things, nothing that she wouldn't do, no place that she wouldn't go to sacrifice for us. But most, we just thank you for everything you continue to do in our lives. As we take this juice, let us remember what Jesus did on the cross. And in his name we pray. Amen. There is a Savior. What joys express. His eyes are mercy. that wraps up our service for today. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, I hope that if you're watching this, maybe you can made it, make a decision to be a mother to someone, uh, to help someone and strengthen them with the things God has shown you in this life. I pray you have a blessed week, and I pray uh, that the Lord will be with you and watch over you. Let's be praying for one another, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday.